examples and just created so many good opportunities for IG that there wasn't really that much pressure on them the whole entire game. Yeah. And I like their draft a lot. Uh, I think they punish a Doom pick pretty heavily because Gyrocopter and Shadow Fiend, once they get their items, they if they get Doom, it doesn't matter. They can still right click people. And yeah. if they go down, they're going to take someone down with them usually. Yeah. I, I thought that Rattlesnake did do a really good job with their uh, Infester Bomb or their um, Lifestealer Bomb ganks, at least, with the Invisible Doom. That was really effective. They picked off Bat a couple times. They had some great initiations in the early game. Mm. Um, and then they turned that into some Shadow Fiend kills in the mid game as well. I also I couldn't believe, like, it was so cool how Farrar gets ganked by them, and then he grabs a Manta or he grabs an Illusion, and he sends an Illusion there. He's like one step ahead of them. He's like, you know, I bet they'll do the same thing twice. I'll send Illusion. And then the, the fact that Rattlesnake also thought a step ahead would just, that blew my mind. I was like, oh my <laughs> god, the super meta. It was really cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But this is the IG that. Uh, is in pretty good form though. They yeah. th they weren't very sloppy. They had like pretty solid draft overall, pretty solid play. And I mean, if they if they play like this, I mean, Rattlesnake, I don't really think has a chance for game two. Yeah, and it's looking pretty promising for IG overall in the tournament. I thought they uh, did great all over the place. I didn't see too much sloppiness. I think mm -hmm. they played a really solid game. So I think Rattlesnake has a chance of taking a game, but I think IG definitely more likely. I think their uh, the IG draft was fantastic. They were totally ready for all of these mm -hmm. heroes. They somehow got both Life Stealer and Bat Rider. Wait, okay, no, no, sorry, opposite teams. Yeah, they had so. good solutions for Life Stealer though. We saw yeah. Life Stealer just run rampant in a few of the other games today, and uh, Bat Rider not do too much. But it was completely the opposite yeah. for this game. Life Stealer was uh, shut down pretty hard. He raged, but. He could, he just got right click down and after rage he just died to like Requiem or any other myriad of yeah. AOE spells that they had. Speaking of Requiem, that one team fight by the Roshan fight where mm. uh, or where Ferrari got that ultra kill, he his patience on his BKB ulti was really impressive. He was just standing there right clicking the Dragon Knight until he went to about seventy percent HP and when all the BKBs finally went down, he popped his own BKB to guarantee his ulti got off and it just wrecked. Yeah. in the team fight. If he would have just popped that at the start of the fight, like a typical Shadow Fiend player would, sure, it would kill all the creeps there, and it would do a little damage to the supports who are moderately close, but saving it reduces it just, damage, too. I it, didn't know this. Yeah, it absolutely wrecked the enemy carries, and since it's magic damage, it goes right through heroes that have high armor, like mm -hmm. Dragon Knight and Lifestealer. It was really well done, so I think, seriously, he was MVP It was a very good game. game for Shadow Fiend to shine, though. Yeah. And I think that Rattlesnake may have to draft like a more aggressive lineup. Doom can't really do anything prior to six, you don't, you're not really scared of a smoke doom gank as opposed to like a smoke shadow demon Lena or shadow demon Chen. Any of those like really early aggressors punish shadow De uh, fiend really hard, but with their sort of lineup, shadow fiend just got the levels that he needed. He was in a relatively easy matchup, zoned out of DK pretty early and it was all history from there. Yep, so congrats to IG there. They're gonna take him one. I do have to eat some crow here though. I questioned Lumi about the double damage illusion thing. I knew it worked with Meepo, but I was wrong. You were right. Sorry, my friend. I'll never doubt you again. Somebody keep a counter on how many times that's going to happen. I'm just saying. I don't think we need to. Uh, yesterday, yesterday Quantic Rattlesnake. One for me. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> can't say anything to that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, runes, double damage runes do affect any controlled illusions within a 500 AoE for 45 seconds. So it's only if they're near you, which you don't always see. But right. Lumi was right. Just a little mechanics knowledge for you guys. So Shouldn't have doubted you, Lumi. Quit he's, advertising he's mad over there. Come on. He's mad at me. You're advertising. I'm not mad at you. Product placement. Get that stuff oh. off stream. No, they just yeah, saw... Chick-fil-A ain't paying us. They just saw the the straw. If guys. anyone from Chick-fil-A is watching, we would be very interested in discussing a sponsorship with you. Having your money, you mean. <laughs> yes, and having your money. That as well. Uh, so with that being said, Kawa, do we have any interesting results here? Uh, yeah. I imagine game two <laughs> should be starting pretty soon. He's eating right now. If you guys didn't know, Kawa, uh, at least 60% of his diet is waffles is uh, accurate. I'm not even <laughs> kidding. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We have some updated results from Group B. Group A was played earlier today, and uh, there will be more Group A, but for Group B, we see Tong Fu as a leader, 2-0. I believe Orange was their opponent. They are 0-2. Rattlesnake dropped a game um, versus IG, and then Alliance was paired With versus Liquid. LGD oh, Int, and then VP versus Liquid. So uh, we watched VP Liquid. Uh, VP seemed to stomp. Yeah, Liquid Liquid, liquid looked easily. weak. And VP's ganks were really solid, though. I like their draft. Uh, if you guys mm. didn't catch the game, it was sweet. Uh, liquid went for an anti mage, and VP had a lot of anti mage gankers. So they had uh, Vengeful Spirit. They grabbed a support Skywrath mage, and they did a lot of early roaming against him. They did a great job. So, so is there anything surprising to you about these results? I would um, say maybe Orange not winning a game. Is yeah, I, the I most would surprising agree with thing. that. And I think. 
Liquid maybe had a chance to be Virtus Pro, but after mm. that first game, I wouldn't be too yeah. surprised to see if it's a two. It was ugly. Yeah, it was pretty ugly. So I could see Virtus Pro taking a two versus Liquid. Um, the LGD Int game versus Alliance was also extremely one sided from what we saw. Mm -hmm. um, Alliance had some really strong lanes and great strategies. Uh, LGD Int went for a Spectre, but they got aggressively tri laned. So the Spectre got very, very little farm. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a 2 0 there. Either. So after seeing these, who do you think are like the. We, we kind of see like the top four and the bottom four form out already, but who do you think are like the fifth and sixth that have like a decent chance of third and fourth? Um, I would say Rattlesnake Orange. Rattlesnake Orange? I, I I don't think Rattlesnake really is that much of a shot, personally. Mm -hmm. I think I would actually say Orange is still top four to, for me, probably. And uh, really? I would say that uh, IG and VP, it's a little bit early. to Because yeah. IG won that game, but I didn't feel like I, that was the IG from last year. It didn't look they convincing weren't enough. So we'll, we'll have another game to see how it goes. But and do, you, do you guys think that was IG slacking or Rattlesnake being good, though? I think it was IG just not being crisp, personally. Okay. Yeah. Not that Rattlesnake played horribly, but... I mean, when you say the defending champion beats the 16th slot on the team, it should be a one-sided affair. And it wasn't... That's true. It wasn't... Eh, it was okay. Okay, guys, with that being said, Game <laughs> 2 is actually already underway. So we're going to hop right into it as oh. soon as I bring up the lobby. Really? Right, okay, we'll take like a minute break, and then we'll come back with Game 2. It's IG versus Rattlesnake. Stay with us. It's coming up right after this. And we're back and we're live, and it's game two of a two-game series. I'm LD, he's Lumi. It's Rattlesnake versus IG. In game one, the defending champs, they look good enough. They didn't look dominant. They didn't look like the IG of old, but it's a good start for them. They now lead 1-0. YYF looked dominant. YYF looked great. 430 looked decent. The few supports play well. Like Nobody played poorly, but yeah. nobody played like the champs. I, when, I expect to be oh, wined and dined as a spectator when mm -hmm. I watch IG. You know, you expect... The full core chip, not just the you know, not just showing up with oh a my box God. of chocolates or something. Well, here we go. I mean, look at these picks. It's IG versus Rattlesnake game two, and apparently, are you sure this is not Quantic versus? Apparently, <laughs> God Black has secretly replaced Faith. IG have adopted their first Russian captain in their history. <sighs> okay. Yes, guys, if you type exclamation Elgato in the chat, you do, in Ten fact, get a free remaining. Elgato in Dota 2. It is true. It's a special promotion we have running Five with Valve and Twitch. <laughs> no, Resolve that doesn't actually time. work. Okay, so Rattlesnake, they'll pick up a Nyx and a Dragonite here, but uh, you've just picked Dragonite against OD. 
Already you can't win that lane. Dunzo. And then there's a Treon as well. So that mid lane's not going well. If you're Rattlesnake, you are guaranteed to heavily lose mid to one of the stronger semi-carries and kind of snowball heroes in the mid game. So what's your game plan here, Lumi? How do you make up for that? I mean, when you pick OD, when you pick Treon Protector, one of the more dangerous thing to do against this particular team is dive them. So because you have Living Armor, you have Self, Astro Imprisonment, you have a mech, you have a Force Staff. These are the items and the skills that you have to deal with. So there are a couple of ways. Either you just kill everything so fast that the Living Armor doesn't proc, so get a Wombo combo team fight, or you get a Silence, a uh, Puck, Silencer, Quabless Drought, anything that just prevents these ability from ever going off. Kill them quick, or just have massively global gank and overwhelm that Trium Protector. I'm not sure exactly what path they'll take. Um, I just don't think the standard Rattlesnake heroes would do it. Yeah, normally this is where we would see stuff like the Doom, the Weaver if it wasn't banned, uh, your utility, kind of semi-carry split pushers. In the old Ten days, would be the Clockwork. Remaining. Try to think what else they might turn to. They actually banned out Timbersaw. Is it... I don't know if... Would IG actually go for Timbersaw when they already have OD here? I guess OD doesn't really need the Living Armor. Timbersaw and uh, Living Armor is actually... Ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Dota. But oh. you already have OD tree. Do you need to go double tree? Double the fun? Why not? I mean, Timbersaw plus tree off lane, like, you can't beat that. Yeah, then you could even run your 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 Timbersaw mid and your your OD on the safe lane. Yeah, actually, I, I remember Invictus Gaming one day, they were slumping a bit after losing, I want to say, April-ish, mm -hmm. uh, May-ish. And then they came out with, like, four games in a row where they picked tree and protector. And I think I when Tron played it, he never died on the hero. When Faith di played on it, he died, like, once out of three games. So, like, they don't lose with this particular hero. So, I guess IG, just based on history alone, is going to take the game. But we'll see exactly how they will do it. Yeah, if you're Rattlesnake here, it's not about winning a series. It's just about getting a win on the board. If you can mm -hmm. take a game off IG, the defending champs, you feel pretty good about that. Yeah. So, uh, not out of the question Rattlesnake could, but they've got their work cut out for them. So, now they pick up an Atrus Prophet. And now they've got the threat of a mid-game global gank if they get their items and levels. If a Prophet has a Shadow Blade or Orchid, Sight Device, something to gank with, Nyx is level 6, and Dragonite has his Shadow Blade, then maybe IG are a bit nervous, and that's the point where if those three heroes just jump somebody, they will die. But this is assuming they get the farm. And right now, I'm a little worried about this Dragonite getting anything this game. Yeah, I mean, normally you say, hey, Dragon Knight, if you pick up a quick Shadow Blade, you could go with the Prophet, go with the Nyx, and start just wrecking havoc all over the place. But he's not going to have that quick Shadow Blade. In fact, I mean, if he has more than 25 CS by the 10-minute mark, now maybe he'll get more than that. Yeah, I'm guessing he'll get more than that. But if he has more than 30, I'll be impressed. You think he's going to get 30? I'm just looking at this Twitch chat. This is a monstrosity. What's going on with Twitch chat? It's been exclamation Elgato for like 10 minutes now. Guys, if you actually want an Elgato, you can subscribe to BTS and you get an Elgato face whenever you type Elgato. <laughs> it's almost as good as the Courier. I like how the chat hears what it wants to hear. Yeah. And then nothing else. <laughs> if you say capitalize, then they see capitalize. I see. Ben, ben panders. Ben will pretend like it's Ten a mistake, but when remember. he says capitalize, he's doing it to pander to the chat. When I say capitalize, Five I... Seconds just can't Maybe. say English though. <laughs> you just can't <laughs> 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 capitalize. It's just like, okay. Reserve but uh, yeah, Weaver being banned out. This is a fairly smart ban. I thought Invictus Gaming could use Weaver themselves because Weaver plus diving. Oh. Go, go Black has uh, pioneered that quite a bit. And now Warlock coming out from Rattlesnake. So they are going to go for the Wombo combo. Warlock, by the way, eats Tree alive easily because all the Fatal Bond damage don't care about Living Armor because I think Fatal Bonds is HP, HP loss. Yeah, HP loss. So, it's pretty so legit. you still take the Fatal Bonds. At the same time, though, it's not removing the Living Armor. So that'll still be useful versus the other damage sources. Don't forget a recent patch uh, before TI3 started that Shadow Demon Ultimate does not one-hit KO Rock Ten anymore. It oh, used to do that's that. a big That's change. a huge deal. And I, Invictus Gaming going to go back for Lone Druid. This is a hero that we haven't seen the Chinese play for quite a bit. Man, that pa that's just a weird change as well. I don't... Un it's a Purge. Purge has killed the Warlock cult. I guess so. It's so, so bizarre. I... I it, I'm I, a I mean, I guess fan, it's so. certainly not the first or the last time that Dota has seen something that seems inconsistent in mm -hmm. its mechanics, but sure. it's a change. It's a big one. Shadow Demon's still a very strong hero this game, though. I mean, you're up against a lot of heroes that just want to burst time. someone, and still, if you get off a disruption against Nyx IG's or Dragonite, that can turn the fight. Also, for those of you guys are wondering at home, whether OD's orb 
does extra damage to Warlock Ultimate, they do not do that in Dota 2. In Dota 1, OD, the orb? Yeah, the Astro... Uh, the Arcane, Arcane Orb. Orb. Arcane Orb. You're saying it does not work on the Infernal. In Dota 1, you just two-shot it. Easy, yeah. or three-shot it. In Dota 2, you don't do any extra damage. In Dota 2, I think the Warlock's actually considered an ultimate. Or, I'm considered a hero. That's why, like, it doesn't die to the Purge. Hmm. Uh, at least not to Shadow Demon. It still died to Defusal Blade Purge. That's where inconsistency comes in, so... <laughs> it's very bizarre. Yeah. Uh, if you're new to Dota 2, welcome to a game with a lot of interesting and mechanics. And freaking Blood Oh, here. yeah! All right. Oh, baby! All okay. right. Get me some coffee. I'm, I'm wide awake now. Your Blood Seeker pick from Rattlesnake. I hate to do this, but I got to. Go tweet right now. Hashtag TI3. Bloodseeker has been picked. Screw the space cow. He sucks. In with the new. In with the Bloodseeker. And IG respond with something a lot more standard here, Lumi. Well, it's a Tinker. We haven't seen them play that for Oh, go for the Tinker. All right. I don't mind that. Actually, oh, I thought it was going to be uh, a uh, 430 Tinker. That used to be one of his signature heroes. Well, YYF. YYF. Yeah, good Tinker player as well. So, Bloodseeker. I mean, how do you do this? Do you put Zoe on the... Uh, Lane by himself and go offensive? No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Do you put him on a suicide lane and you, you safe lane the tank? Now, uh, save us. <laughs> we're trapped inside the draft overlay and we can't get out. Prepare All right, we're we're leaving the draft overlay, guys. Don't. All worry. right, okay. Production That's why we value. have a preview monitor. Uh, and we can introduce the teams now, Lumi. Yeah. Let's before we get too carried away talking about Bloodseeker, because I know we're going to. On the side of Rattlesnake, you've got Kabu, the Nyx Assassin, Luo playing the Dragonite. Icy on the Prophet, Sag M on the Warlock, and the one that we care about, Lamb on the Bloodseeker. Now, before I let you talk, let's introduce IG. Joe, offlane lone druid, he's got the cauldron. Raise your cauldrons, guys. All the memes in one chat. 430 on the solo mid OD. Faith handling the Shadow Demon. That puts YYF on your safe lane tinker in the tri lane, and will be there with Chuan on the Triant. So I, I really like the way that lane, IG has got their lane. Because there's nobody on the long lane, I mean, sure, there's Prophet. He's not really going to slow... I mean, he's going to try his best to slow down the particular tree, but Chuan's going to get his level by pulling, and it's very important that he does get the level. On the top lane, Zoe's going to have somewhat of a tough time, but because he has living armor, he could actually just go in and harass a lot more aggressively. And to be honest, what the hell is a support warlock going to do in terms of zoning him out in the lane? And of course, obviously on the mid lane, it is going to be a easy lane. Like, absolutely easy lane against Bloodseeker. Unless he goes something non-standard. And when I say something non-standard, I mean you have to Blood Rage at OD. I mean, here's the thing, though. is Bloodseeker is not going to lose damage from Astral. He doesn't particularly need his mana in the laning stage. Sure. It's yeah, it's a passive game. Wiener. Yeah. Bloodseeker has a pretty good attack animation. He's got very good base damage. Uh, he's fairly tanky. He's got a stout shield. And you can't really harass him out of lane because... He's still going to get a few last hits here and there with Blood Is he, though? Because good OD plays would Astro him before you he gets the last hit. You, but you can't Astro constantly. Like, even if you, I, let's say even if you just get one or two CS out of a wave, you'll pretty much always be close to full health. Yeah, so, I mean, this is going to be a very, very passive lane all over the place. Uh, so I'm going to just feast my eyes on this solo mid. Because it reminds me a lot of teams that are running Lifestealer mid to deal with OD, which is something we've seen. Uh, you don't kill the OD, but you farm, and you don't die. And I think that's what we should see from Lamb if he plays this right. Then in the mid game, uh, if we want to talk more about Bloodseeker, one of the interesting changes to him, Lumi, was his ult now does HP removal damage. Yes. Uh, it or it's HP removal, but it can actually kill you. It goes unlike, through BKB as well. Yeah, and it goes through BKB. Uh, there, so it's basically pure damage. Yeah. It's not pure damage, but it, it's not reduced by anything. So what Odi's trying to say is that this spell is wacky as hell. It is, again, more exception to the rule. And here's the ast astral that's going to begin to happen. One thing that kind of is awkward for uh, Bloodseeker to deal with is that our World Destroyer is going to have way more damage than he does. So he's, in fact, the range damage of 430 is going to match the Quelling Blade damage of, of Lamb. That's how big the damage difference is uh, that OD has over anybody. Yeah, that's not here yet, but it is coming soon. And uh, we do have other lanes of this game. <laughs> it's funny because it's the most interesting hero in the game mid, but it's actually probably the most boring lane mid. OD versus Bloodseeker. Very passive. Uh, but, Lumi, when we look at this pick, like... I, I will we'll poke around at the other lanes, but why would you go Bloodseeker here? Like, what does he give you that some other solo mid would not? I'm not actually sure, because Bloodseeker is a really, really bad hero when the other team decides to find man. And to be honest, IG has a really good find man lineup. Um, so, 
I'm not too sure myself. I, I guess it's just pick for the, the OD lane. Is it just for the silence? Because he is one of the best silences in the game. He, I guess he lanes all right against OD, so that could be a consideration. It definitely forces OD to get a BKB just to cast all of his spells. And more importantly, the BKB doesn't actually protect the OD. So it does have some very awkward interaction with, with that enemy hero. So I guess you're saying, hey, man, we're going to just drop our Warlock ult anyways. That's where of most of our damage. So... Uh oh, uh, courier mid. Oh, that's uh, one thing we forget about. It purges living armor. Oh yeah. Yeah, we, we, I totally talked about that during my patch lock analysis when the hero came out. I know a lot of people probably in chat is saying why are these casts are so scrub, but yeah, that's a huge reason to pick this particular hero. It purges living armor. It can purge the living armor, but I bloodseeker can't be everywhere, so it's not like a total solution. Right, but, but when when bloodseeker ganks somebody, what is the natural response? Oh, let's living armor and he'll be fine. The purge comes out, the rupture comes out. And that hero right. is Dunzo. But that still doesn't address the issue of the mid-game 5-man, though. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. And sure, you have the Warlock ult, but if you're IG, you can just siege with the bear, with maybe even some disruption illusions, and just zone them out with March. So in the mid-game, if it gets to that point, and IG's in a decent spot, they I still think their 5-man is going to be very hard for Rattlesnake to deal with. That's where Icy, it, a lot of it relies on him to split push effectively, and then hopefully Rattlesnake somehow does find that big Warlock ult. Well, we'll see how the game's going to progress. But this particular mid lane, in terms of the CS war, we have 15 and 5 on. And in fact, Bloodseeker's out laning 430 right now. 430 is missing a couple of these CS. That, to be honest, he should not be missing. So, Lam is just putting him on tilt, perhaps, even. Yeah, uh, Bloodseeker is. I think he's very underrated for his ability to just CS and win that battle in the mid lane. Again, though, he's not going to have mana to actually rupture 430, most likely. Probably won't kill him, but in the mid game, could still be a nuisance. Now, top lane is a gank on the bear. Remember, this gives 300 gold. It won't fall yet, though. They're really forcing a tier 1 quite early. I mean, you're running a tri lane with a Warlock and a Nyx. Generally, you want to just get level 6, but they're trying to push this tower down quite early. And yeah. they're giving away a lot of experience to Joe in doing so. I mean, Joe is somewhat afraid to actually go back in right now because of Impale and a couple more stuns to follow up. They're doing a very good job zoning him out. He's not get getting too much. He's only level 2.5, to be honest. In fact, Kabu is the same level as he is. Warlock's similar, so now Zo hits 3. Yeah, so. but you look at the Offlane Prophet, he's level 1. So in that sense, they're coming out pretty heavily on top there. Yeah, I mean, he's he's trying to slow down these two supports, and they're, he's doing an okay job at doing so. But one thing they, they didn't really factor in is that you're not really going to get this tower kill because of living armor. Chuan's going to just sail it back up, and you're just wasting way too much over time. Why can't, why can't you Blood Rage Towers, Luby? <laughs> well, first of all, he's not there, so that's, that could be it. Why does Dota do these things to me? Thank you, Kawa. Weird bugs. Weird bugs, but... Uh, yeah, you can't you can't blood rage the tower, guys. So the living armor will definitely still be useful there. I mean, I don't think you can actually get that push successfully until you get the dragon eye ultimate, which you know Radiant's screw your living armor because I do poison damage over many instances. So I do feel. I mean, they were getting a bit frustrated by these creep pulls of Joe, I suppose. The bear constantly nuisance, and that is the one issue with their supports is they couldn't really stop the bear from pulling the wave. But at the same time, their creep pulls have been available for a decent chunk of the game. So, I, I guess Joe's getting his experience either way, but I don't know. Warlock, this is one of his weaknesses as a tri lane, as a support, is he can't zone out bears, he can't zone out heroes that well generally, and he's certainly not killing something like the bear. Yeah, right now we do see Lamb turning level 6, and he's just running off the lane. I'm not sure if he's looking for a rune or something. He just made this like awkward circle that ran across and then down here and then out back to the mid lane. Okay. Not sure what that was about, but he's not definitely not getting rusty mana. I do want to point out, YYF has quietly gotten 1,700 gold and a Sol Ring recipe in six minutes, and I, he's going to skip that and just go straight Boots of Travel. Good choice. This could be, I don't know if this will be record-breaking, but this will probably be like top 10 Boots of Travel times, because rarely do you see Tinker get free farm, and rarely do you see him skip bottle and skip Sol Ring and go straight for the bots. Yeah, normally, I mean, a 10-second BOT is a very good time. And he's going to have it well before that. I want to point out, you'll notice he's saving some skill points here. If he gets the Boots of Travel, he wants to have a skill point to take Rearm immediately. Yep. Uh, and definitely you want to have Marching Machine as well. So we'll see. Or higher levels of the Marching Machine. We do have Fates Boot being picked up on Lamb. But still no mana do anything because OD, OP. Yeah, so Rattlesnake just cannot seem to do much to shut down Joe. He's level 4.5. And, and again, I'm looking at a Prophet... Who's level two? Why am I up already? The boots oh, are traveling. Oh, top lane here. They're gonna send him up right now. Impale's gonna follow through as well. There and there's a warlock here that is gonna dispel the living armor. 
and so much burst damage. That's only a level, I think it was only a level one living armor, maybe two, anyway. It, it doesn't matter Not what enough. level it is. The burst damage came out so fast, and that's a free kill, and without the Warlock, well, there's the Tinker, because BLT is up. Guess up? who's got bots? And that, that tower, yep, it's, it's gonna be okay. Normally, you get a tower, you have also have a level six Dragonite. That's like a guaranteed tower, and... The vast majority of games, but not in this one, Lumi. No, not in this one. Not against living armor. It's one. It's one reason why we normally see teams will do anything to contest the Tinker because once he gets his boots of travel, it is very much like when a Wisp hits level six. It's just a whole new ball game. Yep. Now well, you've got to completely change the way you were planning to play the game. If you ever dive a tower, you dive into March, third highest all time. So our second highest. My question is, how is? And I know this is only. A silly question to ask eight minutes in the game. How is Rattlesnake going to ever push against Living Armor and Marcher Machine? I don't think they can actually win this game by pushing. Right, they, they have to kill They need to win it right. by getting pickoffs with the Nyx and the Bloodseeker. If you get Bloodseeker, Lamb's now jungling. So he's decided mid lane's no longer to his I liking. Mean, and that CS start that he had, look at his CS since then. Look at the level difference as well. This is level 8 Bloodseeker, or level 8 uh, OD against a uh, Bloodseeker that's hitting a 7. And He's not ganking anybody, he's not doing anything, so... I mean, theoretically, like you pointed out, there's a lot of reasons why Bloodseeker could be a good pick this game. The fact that the the Blood Rage disrupt or uh, removes Living Armor, the fact that Rupture will affect even BKB heroes, so OD wants to go BKB, but he'll still take the damage. Obviously, in theory, Bloodseeker's decent at ganking split pushers and global heroes to some extent, but in practice, Lumi... I'm not seeing it so far. Bloodseeker yeah. mid not doing anything except jungling. That is, ju you don't run a solo mid Bloodseeker to jungle. I'm pretty sure like Rattlesnake has practiced heroes against tree because Quantic plays tree, you know, for their wild card match. That's very true. And then they're like, oh, this actually doesn't work. Let's just ban out the tree. <laughs> but then now they're trying to pick it against uh, what well, IG's got. Yeah, that was Quantic's tree though, and yeah. I don't know if they respect IG's tree or even thought IG would go for it. We yeah. have seen IG pick it before, yeah, but they, it's they not like tree. an every game kind of thing. Yeah, it's not like Quantic where. Like, God Black picked so much tree that we just put three tree ants for his signature heroes. And we're pretty much on the mark there. Well, Lamb is... He's got mana. The first time in since eight minutes, he's got mana. What does he do with the mana? He goes into the jungle and perhaps set up... No, he, he's just jungling. Well then. Okay, so I think if you're Rattlesnake right now, you need level six on Kabu. You need level six on Sagam. We're nine minutes in, they still don't have it. Until they get those level six ultimates, the Warlock ult allows them to team fight. The Nyx ult allows them to gank. They actually can't do anything. Like, there's nothing they can do. Even though Dragonite's getting farmed, he's not going to sneak up on anyone. You're not going to gank anyone with him. Maybe they could smoke gank, but Warlock's horrible at smoke ganking. Nyx is uh, okay, but the level 6 is really what you want for the burst damage. So, honestly, I don't think Rattlesnake can do anything now. They just have to farm, get levels, and hope that their mid game has more openings. I mean, this early game has none. You make it sound like IG is doing something, right? They, they're also passively farming. 430 is just lasting in the mid. You get as though is lasting on the bot lane. The big difference between the two teams, quote unquote, doing nothing is that IG is doing more of nothing because they're ancient stacking. You see that Tinker right now working on that. Faith has spent about three, four minutes here de warding, ancient stacking. And YWF is going to propel himself very far ahead. Also, Zoe farms a little bit quicker. He puts pressure by farming. When he gets near your tower, you got to be somewhat afraid. Because he is going to eat your towers alive. Oh, man. If IG have discovered Tinker, that scares me a lot. Because, I mean, we've seen what the Southeast Asian teams can do with that hero. And if you combine that with kind of the, the good movement and maybe slightly more efficient play of a team like IG, that hero is an absolute pain in the butt to deal with. Maybe Chuan's Malaysian influence is shining through here because for a long time, it's Tinker's been mostly something that a few Western teams would run, mostly just mouse ports for Koikfa and Liquid very occasionally for Bulba. Uh, and outside of that, it's been the Southeast Asian teams. XY, uh, occasionally KYXY, but now we're seeing something scary. YYF Tinker. Yeah, now they're going to siege on a tier 1 tower on the bot lane. I mean, Tinker's actually a really good sieging hero because the hell are you going to do? Run in a marching machine to hit the bear? Like, that's already a loose-loose situation. The tower is working on the bear, but Living Armor is keeping it alive quite a bit. And they are slowly working it down. We haven't really talked about the Lone Druid too much, but once the Lone Druid gets a Radiance, oh god, can you imagine Radiance, Living Armor, and Marching Machine in a single team fight? <laughs> like, what do you do against this? <laughs> and the Living Armor, I guess you can always Blood Rage the bear, but... Uh, I, I guess. Yeah. Well, they are going to get a tower deny out of this, I suppose. Well, will they, though? They're coming back in. 4.30 wants to go. Yep, tower. Already denied. They do get off an Astral, though. Uh -oh. Look for the root. Will they find it? There's your Soul Catcher as well. The Impale comes through. 
And Big Cobbler's rock. on the run. There's your OD ult as well. The rock deployed, but not really doing too much damage. And the orb just blows it up. Yeah. I think it was affecting it there. I like three shots. Not sure. Maybe. Now Faith Faith is be getting impaled. He dropped as well. Two heroes dead. They're on the run. Icy with a casual suicide teleport. Now ROTK. Shout out to ROTK. Man, I hope DK kicks ass this TI3. They, they, they kick some.